All right, Shalom Akim Shalom. Hey, Yabba Shemel Shai, Baraka Thumb. All praises to Yahweh by Shemel Shai and Devon to the Elder Apostles of the Great Millstone. All right, welcome back to another GMS Inspiration of the Almighty. And um, as you can see, the title today I could not say I was a man until I started serving the Lord. I could not say that I was a man until I started serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And um, what I'm going to do in this little quick little lesson, man, I just want to encourage you, brethren, and uh, shed the light on being coming to this truth and an understanding this truth. That's when you really start feeling like a man, you know. Um, how society bred us, you know, what we what we've grown to know what the world is and everything and what a man's supposed to be. All of that shit was crap. But then as soon as you come to the word of the Heavenly Father, you you um you start really realizing what what is a man, the mentality of what it means to be a man in the in the action that you're supposed to take and what it means to be a man. And it's it's I'm telling you brothers, it's like it's such a beautiful feeling once you feel like you're truly a man. And that only comes through um, serving y'all by Shema with Shine, truth and sincerity. And once you get that feeling, brothers, it, it, it's, it's just like, it, it's, it's just like, it's something you would never, you, you couldn't, you wouldn't trade for nothing, you know? Matter of fact, what sparked this whole little lesson is this. We was on the street. And um, the spirit had us speaking about this. Let, 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 I'm going to play this clip real quick. And we hold each other to a certain standard, man. We, we expect you to be a man in this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. We expect you to take care of yourself. Right, right, right. All right. Yeah. My boy, I got it. No, we just, that's what we do, man. We're going to make sure that you do what you got to do it, to take care of your fam and all of that stuff, you know? And we ain't all in your business either. Right. We ain't weirdos like that. We just making sure. Look, bro. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you uh, you handling your business as a man. Because um, as the brother Martha Zach would say, which go to the of the board. That's where I got it from. It starts with That's you where first. I got it from. Yep. yep. In order to be a man of the Lord, you gotta be a man first, man. A and man that's some real ass shit. But then yeah. when you, you know, when you first when you first come out in the world, you so immature and, and you kind of follow the ways of the world that you really. You ain't, you ain't a man. man. You're not a man when you coming out the world. Yeah, you nah, just you like on some, uh, uh, you on some real childish proof. stuff. But, but, but you never had, yeah. we really never had that manly figure there. But when you come in the truth, you going you, that big, that spirit gonna be there. It's gonna check you. And then when you actually, if you submit to the spirit, you see how much better it is. It's like, damn, I was being for 20. I would have never, never had a baby with this goddamn bitch. I would have been able to see the flags if I would have had that ministry. It's a, different, it's a bunch of different things you start to see and you start appreciating that spirit of how we we've been supposed to have that spirit from yeah. our fathers. Yeah. 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 You lost your car. All you have to do is go to the DMV, bro. Yeah. It's your permit. Yeah. <laughs> or just knowing when you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even something like that. Just. You know, a man, I mean, not a man, but uh, uh, a little boy don't know when he's wrong, man. But a man, he knows when he's wrong, and he has, you know, hey, that was my bad, bro. Yeah, you know, young man. ass punk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Young ass punk, uh, uh. Um, all right, so, as you as you seen right there, as you seen right there, you know, I can't. We was talking about that, and 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 it, I was reflecting this morning when I woke up, and I was like, man, I remember we was talking about that, and and you heard us, brother, and speaking in the spirit. It's like, you know, you you birthed to be a man, all right. Um, the Heavenly Father programmed us a certain way, and that's to be to be manly. You know what I'm saying? To show yourselves men, and when you start doing that, it's like that's it's compatible with you. You feel it, and it, it feels so fucking good. Like brethren was explaining, you you won't make the mistakes that you were making before. You know, uh, like like the brother was called the little young punks make. <laughs> you don't make those stupid mistakes no more. Like having 
children with the wrong woman or losing a car because you simply just didn't go to the DMV. Or, or like Daniela said, um, knowing when you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it's just a, such a beautiful spirit to, to have that, uh, to feel, to be a man, being able to take care of your house, take care of yourself. And worship Yahweh Hashem Shai and be integral, be full of integrity, integral type person. And it goes for the sisters too to be a real woman, to not be out there just throwing your box around like, like it holds no no value. To be able to restrain yourself, you could be burning, but like I'm not finna give my my box to just some random ass dude. I'd rather have that discipline and burning and hold my value. It's just like the Lord, the, the Spirit of Hashemel Shai teaches you these things, man. It truly does. And it feels good. It feels so fucking good, man. You know, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 in the NLT says, When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. So, literally, the Spirit of the Lord, grow, you grow up. You know, you, you, you ain't got to ask for money or, or I'm talking when I mean, like ask for money is like, not that you, uh, you know, you, you do come into hard times where you asking brethren for money, but I'm talking about like, you got your own money. You will get your, you will get your butt up in the morning or whatever, whatever respective time you go out and, and handle your business in the work world and make money. <laughs> you know, you ain't got to lean on this person, lean on that person. Because you're being manly and stuff. And it feels good to be able to... Uh, shit, just go buy a beer if you want. Man, you got your own little money to buy a beer, man. You could, you could jump in your own car. And roll. You, you want to go to the store and get some clothes or whatever. You go jump in your car and go get them. There's nobody to tell you, hey, man. That, uh, um, you shouldn't... You, you know, it's just like nobody to, to talk against what you want to do. You know, as far as the liberty you have. But that comes from being a man. But, you know, you got these weirdos in the world. They think they men. They ain't fucking men. They followers. And they, and they, um, they don't hold, they don't take care of no damn responsibility out here. Period. These dudes, these dudes, man, they getting ran by women. They living with their parents. You know? It's just like they doing so much. It's just childish and it's so disturbing. Their life is a disturb, it disturbed, and and they're disturbing. But the Lord frees you from that. You know. Matter of fact, Second Timothy two and twenty two says, "Run from anything that simulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living." This is the NLT version. It says, "Run away from that. Run a run." From anything that simulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous thing. On righteous living. Faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So, that, that's what we do, man. <laughs> you know, that's what we do, man. We run away from that youthful lust bullshit, man. Tighten up your body, man. Your skin is beautiful, bro. You know? If you're Israelite, your skin is beautiful. If you're taking care of it, of course. You know, like when I go out to the gym and I'm, you know, you know, you, I got my half cut shirt on or whatever. Um, I notice my body, my body, I can see my skin. When I look in the mirror, I can see all my skin. But I'm looking at Jake around the gym. They head all tatted, they arms all tatted. It's like. Bro, you got, it'd be a Jake in there, muscle bound, but you can't even see the cuts in his muscles because they covered up with tattoos. And I, I know some of us brethren, we didn't got tattoos, you know, not knowing no better. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing better, you got tattoos or whatever, but it's like a brother regret that shit. I bet you if brethren could, they'd take those tats off of them. But to sit there and just be tatting up your body for a woman, you're making a, a lifelong decision to deal with temporary temporary woman to touch your body up like that a lifelong damn decision for a temporary hoe it's like those things we flee away from that living you got you living with your goddamn mama and shit 
what you know, I know certain brethren are, you know, uh, you probably in a young age and you building up to getting your own spot and things like that, which, you know, um, if the shoe fit, wear it when I'm, when I'm speaking, but you got a lot of men out there. They, oh, they grown ass men. These niggas don't know how to turn left or turn right. You know, they've been living with their mama. They, they mama cussing him out. He waking up late and shit. Leave me alone, man. Dang, I'm trying to sleep. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? When you in the spirit of Yabba Shemel Shai, you start to flee all that, man. You know? And I've seen brethren, I've seen brethren coming in, the, even me, myself. I've seen myself, and I've seen brethren coming in the camp, um, you know, young, and got really too much to anything. They're living with their parents and everything. Next thing you know, these brethren got families. These brethren got their own spot. These brethren got trucks. And it's not a thing of uh, prosperity either. It's not that. It's a, it's a man's mentality that took them over, that the Lord gave. It's a father figure mentality that the Lord set in there. And then you start becoming a man and you start handling your business. You And when you're handling your business, you're feeling it. Of being a man is just like, you, you thank the Lord for that feeling, man. You wouldn't trade it for the world. All right. But see, a lot of men, what happens with our people is that they start gaining excuses, man. A nigga will gain excuses because his father ain't there. My daddy. You know, they got that sin in the world. Um, daddy issues and shit. Man, when you come to the, the word of the heavenly father, hey, you, you probably did have an issue with your pops not being there. You probably was really mad at your pops on the choices he made or whatever. You know, or he didn't show you enough attention and love. You probably really did have that. But when you come to the word of the Heavenly Father, it's like you understand why now. So then that love to your pops is like you may not, hey, you may not really mess with them like that. But you, you got to you respect them and stuff, man. It's like it is what it is, man. We cursed. That's why I have it right here. Understanding why the father figure was gone. First off, we were cursed. Deuteronomy 28 and 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes should be evil toward his brother and toward his wife and toward his bosom and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he should leave. So we know that we're cursed. Our, our, the Heavenly Father said, look, I'm going to take your pops out the house. I'm going to take your parents, period. Some of us didn't have mothers. Some of us didn't have fathers. Some of us, you know, foster care, you know. Some of us did have them, but they weren't there, really. Or you, they was there. They wasn't teaching you the Lord. It's like a whole bunch of different scenarios. But understanding that the Lord made it like this, we went off. But you come to the word of Yahweh Shemel Shai, and understanding get put all in those places. So then you start manning up to every goddamn thing. You know, handling your business and just taking it on the damn chin. Matter of fact, I have found this right here. There's a Esau got all type of damn medical terminologies, but he has a, a, a medical terminal terminology called absent parent syndrome. And look what the de definition um says. It says um the absent parent syndrome refers to parents who are not physically, emotionally, um let me read that again. It says that the absent parent syndrome refers to parents who are not physically or emotionally present during the child, the children's childhood. The role of parents in a child's life is un, undeniable, undeniably crucial, shaping their development and influencing their future. So. A lot of our people, we suffer from that, that what Esau calls absent parent syndrome and what happens is that it shapes and develops and influencing their future. It, it, it influences Jake's future to be a damn demon. He's full of low self-esteem, aggression, uh, poor education. He doesn't want to educate himself. He, he's, he's just, he feels like he's angry at the goddamn world. He's angry at everybody and shit. You know what I'm saying? He feels like he's worth nothing, so he's just going to... I don't give a fuck attitude. He's walking around this place ready to kill anybody. He don't care. And it's all because of what Esau would call absent parent syndrome and shit. 
And, and yeah, man, we all been affected by this. And it, it does hurt. It does affect you. This is true. But see, you come to Yabba Shemal Shai and brethren now, you have brethren uh, in, the, in the Holy Spirit to teach you, look, it gives you understanding and shows you the way. And then you see men that actually handling their business and you want to do the same thing, man. And that and that and that's it's it's such a beautiful thing. And this is truly the kingdom of heaven being um refurbished. It's being refreshed. You know, the the the, the true way of the Israelites is coming back. Men are on top of their business, first worshiping Yahweh by Shemel Shai and, and and taking care of their self and taking care of their families, man. <laughs> and it feels good when you're able to do so. And there's no excuses from this point forth. It is what it is. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 4. I'm all in the NLT right now. It says, Therefore, since the Heavenly Father and mercy have given us this new way, we never give up. Now it's time. We ain't giving up on this. This is where it's at. And yes, it gets challenging sometimes. Sometimes you ain't happy. You ain't in the mood. But that's a part of being a man too. Sometimes you... you Discipline is kicking in on you, or what it means to to uh, um, to take your punishment like a man is kicking in on you. You know, but we never give up. It says we reject all shameful deeds and understand methods. We understand the method. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of the Heavenly Father. We tell the truth before the Heavenly Father, and all who are honest know this. So that, that's how we're moving now. This is a manly mind state of moving. You know? We ain't trying to rob niggas out here. These little niggas out here robbing stores and robbing people on the street. They doing all type of weird stuff. Getting shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we ain't on none of that no more. You know? We ain't out here trying to get what you got so that we could uh, up ourselves one. Nah, man, we going to, shit, brother, I'm going to work for whatever it is they got to get and whatever they want, man. We're going to rob you for your new shoes. We go working and get some new shoes. It's like, it's more of a, we live an honest living. And like I said, all who are honest know this. It says, if the good news we preach is hidden, uh, that, that that's really what I wanted right there. You know? So, um... Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 in the NLT, verse 17. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Yahweh Shai have become a new person. The old life is gone and new life has begun. And that's exactly what has happened to us. <laughs> new life has begun in us, you know? And, and we live in it and it feels good. It feels good to be able to say you a man. I could not say that I was a man until I came into this truth, man. And I remember after like a certain point of being in the truth, I started to feel it. It was like a, one of the weeks I was having and I was like, I, I had a spiritual high going because I felt like a fucking man. <laughs> felt like a man. And I was saying for the first time, I I, I remember at the, uh, for the first time I was thinking to myself, man, I feel like a man, yo. You know what I'm saying? I had my chin up high, just smiling in, in, in my mind and all type of shit, man. Thinking about how, like, thanking the Lord first and foremost, all praise y'all, but I'll shy and just making my moves, you know what I mean? Making moves, thinking right, feet under me. That comes from being in Yahweh Shai. New life has begun. So, you brethren out there, you, you sisters, man, you know, embrace that feeling and, and feel it and. and Continue to move forward in that feeling. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy that feeling. Because like we like we speaking, Jake out here don't know what the fuck to do. Thinking that they men. Nigga, you chasing woman. Your whole mindset is based around a woman. It ain't based around the Lord. Yo, you, you, you making millions of dollars, but nigga, you an adulterer. Or you robbing people for their money. Or you telling people lies. That ain't that, that ain't no manly shit, man. You tatting your goddamn body up. You know what I'm saying? You basically shaping yourself so that you can please other people and shit. You really don't want to be like that, but you want to please other people so you do what you got to do. That ain't no manly stuff. 
See, Sirach 4 and 10 says, be as a father unto the fatherless and instead of a husband unto their mother. So shalt thou be as the son of the most high and shall love and he shall love thee more than thy mother does. So that's that's what we have in the truth. We have these brethren, the apostles, the elders, the leadership, ourselves, you brethren. Man, we being father figures to each other, man. Showing us each other a better way, a better thinking. And, and that's why it says, now we are sons of the Heavenly Father, and, and the Heavenly Father love us more than our mother does. See, see, being a man of the Lord, having that true figure of being a man of the Lord, the Lord loves you for that, man. Being a man, the Lord loves you for that. Taking care of your business, holding up your responsibility, the Heavenly Father loves us for doing such a thing. You know? And when you read the Titus 2 and 6, it says, In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. And ye yourselves must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teachings. Teach the truth so that, so that your teachings can be criti uh, criticized. Then those who oppose you will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. See, that's what happens, man. Integrity is 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 uh, seen. You know. Integrity is seen. Example is seen, and nobody can't really fuck. They can't say nothing. What could they say? Oh, he take care of his children. Man, oh my goodness, I'm telling you, if I if I step out with my children, people look at me like it's like a like that like I got fucking uh, eight dragon heads coming out my neck, like oh my god, it's a it's a it's a it's a black man with his kids. He's taking care of his kids, honey. <laughs> I'll be tripping off that. I'll be tripping, man. Or if I get if I dress a little real nice, and I step out to somewhere, people look at me like I'm not supposed to be there. Like oh my goodness what does he do like, especially when i'm with brother and we step out i'm talking about people looking at us and i know it's the spirit of the lord that's on us but it's how the the spirit of the lord um is on us to carry ourselves it's like damn these dudes got manners these dudes these dudes dress nice they pants are hanging off their ass they ain't got tattoos over their face they smell good <laughs> they walk they walk like a man they talk when they talk we could understand them clearly. They ain't full of ebonics and all this extra uh, childish. You know? <laughs> Nobody can't say nothing. All they could do is be is, is be in awe at it. You know? And, and I, I love that. I love that spirit that the Heavenly Father had um, um, just placed on it. That manly spirit feels so good, brothers. That's why it led me to this lesson, to talking about it. You know what I'm saying? It led me to talking about it. I couldn't say I was a man until I started serving the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And yet, the spirit of Yahweh Shem El Shai is within us to be manly. And you sisters out there to be truly a, a, a woman. You know what I mean? And now, and now, hey, from this point forth, it's nothing but, but, but royalty and rulership coming next. Royalty and rulership. You know what I'm saying? Aristocrats. You know? Regal. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you know, through the spirit of y'all about your mouth, I just wanted to talk about that, man. I hope that was uplifting to you, brothers, man. Feel good, don't it? Keep keep that spirit up, man. Continue to be a man. Show yourselves men. Gird your loins up like a man, like the Lord, our God, our God, Yahweh Bashmal Shai told us. Hey, Yahweh Shai, Bakatham Makim, our prayers, Yahweh Shai, Shalom.